Uh, you guys know where I'm at. I'm at Sam's Giant Tortoise Farm, and we are in the nursery. Look at all these baby Aldabra tortoises, each one marked, each one moving, all healthy. Look at this. Kate, have you ever, you never even got to see our tortoises when no, they were this small. No, they're so cute. This is how big Nostradamus was when I first got him in Aww. 2004. Look at this. Look at my foot next to him. And here's the man himself, along with his a co-worker, uh, employee and co-worker, Mario. Guys, um, what is going on with all these tortoises? It's been a while since we were in the baby tortoise room, man. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. I, boy, I tell you, I just have a plethora of animals, yeah. different sizes. I have from, from four inch here, and I have all the way up to almost eight inch. And this particular group that I imported from Mauritius uh, came with some really nice shells, and a lot of different shell diversity you're seeing. So. You're seeing long animals, you're seeing short backs, you're seeing high dome, you're seeing some with green eyes, you're wow. seeing some that are missing a nuchal skew. And that's where that diversity comes from. That's why I say one of the nice reasons for, for dealing with imported tortoises, you know, they kind of got a bad knock because years ago people would capture from the wild. These animals aren't captured from the wild. They're from the largest Aldabra breeding facility in the world. Wow, in Mauritius. In Mauritius, right. Wow. And so... Um, they, they have a lot of diversity because they have so many animals, so there's a tremendous amount of genetic diversity as well. You know, people want to get, people want to buy a, a good genetic German Shepherd. Where do they go? They go to Germany. Gotcha. So it's the same thing here with Aldabra tortoises. And that's the reason why you see so, I have such a diversity, because the parents that came from these animals were very diversified themselves. Some are flat and wide. And these are animals, uh, these are these are kind of relationships you you established years ago with the people in Mauritius, yeah, right? You've yeah. been doing this for years. Yeah, I'm actually the exclusive distributor for Mauritius for, I don't know, at least 20 years. Wow, that's incredible, man. Yeah. And so, um, you know, what's funny, friends, is most of the Aldabra tortoises you see in the United States that are pets that are being cared for in captivity pretty much come from you. Yes, I've, I've sold hundreds, hundreds a year. Wow. Hundreds a year. Okay, and all these animals, you know, where people might be thinking, oh my gosh, uh, where are these animals, how are they doing? Uh, they do great. When you buy from Sam and you work with Sam and purchase one of the tortoises from his farm, is you then have a lifelong uh, access to Sam. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any problems, if you, you know, uh, there are videos Sam and I have done about first, uh, not first aid, but being prepared in case something goes wrong with your tortoise. Uh, so Sam has a wealth of knowledge because of 50 years raising giant tortoises, uh, which is important. You know, you gotta yeah, have that. For me, it's my love. It, it really is. You know, I, I, I you know, it's not motivated. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm a business. I have to sell. Uh, I don't like the business of selling animals, but I started hatching so many back years ago. Yeah. I, ha I had to go in business just to offset the cost, of the, just the cost of the food. But what I like to do is if, if I'm going to sell animals, I want to educate people. I want to provide the best experience that that person has with that tortoise. Right. So I stay in contact. I, I follow up all the time. I'm easy to get access to. People will call me and text me all the time about, hey, is this a problem? Is this not a problem? Hey, I'm going to take it to the vet. What do you think is going on here? And that's why I've talked about before. Some of those times I say, well, that's an allergic reaction. And sometimes they're made, well, how do you know that's an allergic reaction? It's happened to because you before. Because yeah. the way that it be, that animal is acting, it's just like your child, you know. A, a, a mother looks at a kid, she's not deciding if, if he has an allergic reaction or if he has pneumonia. She knows. Yeah. Because she's that intimate. Right. So that's my legacy. That's really what I want to pass on to, is, is, the, is the ambassador that I've been for uh, for the tortoises, for helping people and helping the tortoises. Well, let's talk about this situation we find them in here. This is uh, some kind of, uh, what is this, like a uh, carpet? Uh, yeah, this is indoor-outdoor carpeting. Okay. Not trying to create a natural environment right. in here. I'm trying to create a sterile environment. Gotcha. That way, they don't stay that long here. They come right. here and they go. Gotcha. So what's important is those water bowls are clean. Yeah, exactly. Look at this, guys. And I love the way you made this kind of tiered design yeah. here. Uh, they can easily step up and into these. They're shallow. If they flip upside they down in they them, drown. they will not drown. Very important with baby tortoises. Right. They're children. They get into things. You know what I mean? So you want to make sure that the animals are okay. And I'm just going to help this little guy out. He's wedged himself in there pretty good. Oh, yeah, he, he'll get it. Hold on. I'll tickle him. I just tickle him a little bit. And then we help wiggle him out. 
a little bit. There you go. And that's why Mario's here. Mario's on hand. You guys probably come in here a few times a day yeah, to check on have, the animals. Yes, we have cameras. Oh, that's right. You have cameras, which is all very important. Yeah. But I do like this design. It's easy. You could just spray it right out yeah, uh, exactly. and then fill it back up. And we do hit this with chlorine. So okay. it's, it's just, you can't disinfect the ground outside. Right, right. So, so this is, is... You know, you want to keep things sterile. And you can vacuum it up. That's exactly yeah. what we do. And the yeah. houses are specially built. You see, they're a little raised. I know, I love that, this. They have that brick under them. And what we do in the house here is, these are heated with ceramic heat lamps. Nice. So it's got heat from above, and right. it heats up those pavers. Exactly. And what we do here is we create what's called a load light. That's here. That little red light turns on when that when that bulb is lit. So you can easily just come from that door, or look, look in, cameras. and see everything's on, and if, all the heaters are on. one of those elements, one of those heat elements burn out, that load light goes off. Perfect. That's the problem. Load, the, the ceramic heaters are great, and they don't usually burn out. But what happens when they do burn out? You never know. And you can There's be no light. 12 o'clock at night. So right. here, I can just do a quick check. I know those heat lamps are working. That's really cool. So, that's another thing new. So we watch the temperature inside. I have an app just like you do on your phone. What's yep. the temperature? Smoke alarm, being prepared, having a smoke alarm. Yeah. It's network to everybody else's smoke alarm. It goes off in the house. That way if something goes wrong, we know you something's know. wrong. Yeah, that's cool, man. And now you guys, if you do purchase one of these animals, you wind up setting it up in a more naturalistic way, but you can borrow from some of the things like the water and, of course, the heating boxes from Sam. And he'll also uh, consult with you on how to do this the right way yeah. so that, you know, people are always worried, oh, it's an exotic pet. It's difficult. Tortoises, once you get them set up the right way, are generally some of the easier exotics to keep. Right. Yeah. And, and I have a, a bunch of different care sheets. Awesome. Uh, I have a care sheet on how to make indoor enclosures, how to make outdoor enclosures, how to set it up so if you're up north, you can you can take them outside for part of the year and then inside for part of the year. So I go through that. I also have articles about, obviously, the, 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 the general care sheet, a more extensive care sheet. Uh, I, have, uh, I have an article that I've written, which is, a sudden death and Aldabra tortoises, where I talk about all of the crazy ways they can die is not related to disease. Mm. Number one, dogs. Dogs right. are one of the greatest killers of Aldabra tortoises. Our, our galops, and that's the reason because at this size, they have the softest shell as compared to another tortoise because they have to grow very big. So they have to be malleable. The shells have to be malleable. So the, soft, the shells relatively are very soft. So it's easy for an animal like a raccoon to get in there and bite those and, and, and damage those shells. Yeah, you, you can actually yeah, just press a, small, a little bit. Oh, get a small one there. And you can, yeah, you can, you can really, shells. they're pliable. You can they're actually, pliable. you know, that's interesting. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing. Now, I was... Um, just thinking, uh, it's it's just so cool to see so many. Um, where can someone go to purchase one of these from you? Go right to my website, floridaiguana.com, and you can look at the on the homepage. You'll see it to the column. There's a navigation bar, and you can scroll right down to hatchling Aldabra tortoises. I have subadult Aldabra tortoises, and I have adult Aldabra tortoises. Wow, incredible! So I have a lot of inventory, a lot of nice animals, even a pair. Even a, a breeding pair right now wow. of Aldabra tortoises. Wow, there you go, folks. So if uh, you're a fan of reptiles, you've been looking into one of these species, uh, I would recommend you go there, check it out, talk to Sam, see if it's right for you. Please, this is not an impulse buy. Uh, these are a long-term commitment. These get very large, so it's important to make sure that you guys have the space uh, and the ability to manage a beautiful, giant Aldabra tortoise. Well... All right, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out Sam's YouTube channel at FloridaIguanaAndTortoise.com. You can on just YouTube. go to yeah, Sam's Giant Tortoise Farm. Okay, right Sam's Giant Tortoise Farm. All right, everyone, so there you have it. A lot of beautiful baby Aldabra tortoises. Kate's in heaven. Maybe I'll walk away with a few more of them. I don't know. Uh, but anyhow, if you are interested in one, uh, go on to Sam's YouTube channel, Giant Sam's Giant Tortoises. Sam's Giant Tortoise Farm. So, it's so funny, I don't know these Look things. On Look on the shirt. shirt! There you go! Sam's Giant Tortoise Farm on YouTube. Go there. Go to the website. Check it out. Uh, love this guy. Love his knowledge and passion for these animals. And uh, we'll talk to you all, guy, all again soon. Thanks, Mario. Awesome. Appreciate Take care, it. folks. See you guys. Bye.